Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today we're going to talk about something called Taylor polynomial approximations and how these polynomials can approximate a function. So I've got a couple quick little definitions here. Actually, this is not a definition, Maclaurin polynomial, but we'll talk about that one later. So a Taylor polynomial and Maclaurin for that matter, they're basically to help us approximate other functions. Now, why in the world would we do that? Why do we want an approximation? There's several reasons why, but one of the reasons is because polynomials are just easier to work with. If you have to take a derivative or an integral, that's just a lot easier with a polynomial. So this is how we do it. We have some function. So I just graphed a random function here. This function, if we, we had the function, we want to create an approximation to it. The way we do that is we start at some x value. And we're going to call it x equals c. So I'm just going to choose a point here on the graph somewhere, I don't know, right about there. I'm going to put a dot and I'm going to say that is the x value of c x equals c, whatever that is. Some textbooks might use the letter a, just kind of depends, but it's, it's just a x value. It doesn't really matter what letter we use. All right, so now our approximation is going to have to have the same y value. That's where we're going to start off. So that leads us to this. We have our original function evaluated c must equal our approximation of polynomial. So I'm going to call it p for polynomial. Our polynomial, a Taylor polynomial, is going to have to equal the same y value. So if I plug in a c, it must also equal that. Okay, so whatever my graph is going to look like, it's definitely going through that point. Now what we do is we start from here and we're going to expand to the left and expand to the right. And that is called, so we expand the approximation. Sometimes you might see on an AP exam, you might see it that the functions are centered at x equals c or we're expounding around x equals c, so to the left of c and to the right of c. So I might create just a tangent line. We know how to do that. If I created a tangent line of this thing, it would go like that. Well, that's not that's an okay approximation if it's close to x equals c, but it's not a very good approximation if we go further from c. So I could create maybe a parabola that goes something like this, and then that might be a pretty good approximation for this part of it, but then again, right here, it's gonna be off, uh, but then I could create some type of cubed, uh, a cubic, which this one actually is cubic, so it could fit very close to that. So the idea of what we're going to do is create a polynomial that tries to match up closely to our original function. So let's explore this concept with a specific example, exponential function e to the x. And we're going to center it at c equals 0. That's our starting point. So what does that mean? That means right there, put a dot. And we want to center our approximation around that point. So if we know that f of 0 equals 1, then we know our polynomial approximation must also equal 1 when the x value is a 0. So this is something we know must be true. Now, I want to also create a similar shape. What I mean by similar shape is let's do the same slope. So whatever the slope is right there. So that way our polynomial will have the same slope instead of it being you know, a line like that that goes off in a weird direction. That's not a good approximation. Let's get the same slope. Well, that's derivative stuff. So that just means we've got the first derivative of f must also equal the first derivative of p evaluated at x equals c. That will make it so that we have the same slope. For this particular example, that means that 0, because we're centering it at 0, so f prime of 0 must equal p prime of 0. So now we've got this. What is this thing? Don't worry, that it's a lot simpler than it looks like. This is just point slope form. See, I have y minus y1. So I know it, I figure out f of c, and then that's going to equal m times x minus x1. See, that's just point slope form. Real simple right there. And then we take this thing. I know I'm going to go a little bit quickly, so you may have to pause. We're going to take this thing and manipulate it and solve for p of x. And that gives us this. So we solve for p of x, and we can plug in the stuff we know. So f of c. Uh, f is actually f of 0, plug in the zeros to all the c's, and then we get what? We get uh, 1. Where did the f prime of 0 come from? Remember that f prime of x is also equal to e to the x. So again, we can plug in the 0 and get the 1. That's where that derivative comes from. And then it simplifies all the way down to this. p of x equals 1 plus x. So let's take a look at what the graph looks like on that original graph, and then there is my line. So it's just a tangent line. We've been doing that since way back in unit two, unit three, way at the beginning of the year. We've done these things. And again, this is a decent approximation if you're close to x equals zero. But the further away you get from x equals zero, if you move to the right or if you move to the left, the approximation is going to have a bigger error. We're not going to be very close for approximation. All right, so this is what is called a first order approximation. 
Yeah, no, not that first order. This first type of first order is just for a very small interval. And it's just going to be linear. Uh, not a very good approximation, but that's what it's called, first order. So then if we want to make it a better approximation, we then will take the second derivative and make those agree. So I've got all this all written out for you, so you don't have to write it out. It's just kind of tedious. So we know that the y values must be the same, first derivatives must be the same, second derivatives must be the same, all at x equals c. In this example, it's all where c is a zero. So if we go through the same type of process, it basically ends up giving us this. The second order approximation is going to be that p of x equals 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared. Don't stress too much about where this came from. I'm going to show you here in a second where the, the I'm going to show you the formula and how we can come up on this. There's a lot of exploring you could do with Taylor polynomials, uh, but this really is going to be pretty straightforward after I show you the formula. So now let me show you the, the graph though. So if I had that second order polynomial, where's my graph? Here we go. And so that green one would be this. So there's my polynomial, my parabola with a vertex right there. And you can see it's staying a lot closer. My green parabola is staying closer to the black original exponential function. So you can see there, it's a lot better of an approximation than the red one. So second order definitely is gonna be better than the first order for approximations. And then we can keep going. Third order, fourth order with a third derivative, fourth derivative. And that would lead us to this. So this would be the pattern for this one that we're working on. One plus X plus one half X squared plus one three factorial, what? Yeah, I know, I'll talk about that in a second here. X cubed plus all the way to the nth factorial X to the n. So here is our formula for Taylor polynomials. Here we go, we're gonna get this written down. So if you have a differentiable function, it's gonna, a Taylor polynomial approximates F if we're centered about X equals C. And that's important, centered about X equals C, then you have all of this. The Y value of the function at, at an x value of c, so f of c, and then the first derivative, x minus c, second derivative, x minus c, quantity squared. Now look at this, 2 factorial. Now 2 factorial is also just 2, so technically you could just write 2 if you want. I put 2 factorial because I wanted it to stand out to you that we're, that's the pattern. We're doing 2 factorial, 3 factorial. In fact, if you wanted, you could, it's not necessary, but you could even write 1 factorial right there. Right, that's a one factorial, but that's just kind of silly. Like that's just one and then so forth. So X minus C cubed three factorial. And so it keeps going until you get to the nth order that you're doing. N is the order. So I, I was doing the seventh order. I'd have to take the seventh derivative. I would here have the seventh power X minus C to the seventh. And then I would have seventh factorial in the denominator. Common mistake, forgetting the factorial. So don't do that. That's what a lot of kids will do is I'll leave off that factorial part and just put three, four, five in the denominators. It's the factorial with it. And then another common mistake is forgetting this, uh, the exponent there for the quantity. Don't forget X minus C quantity and then raise it to the power. Okay, now Maclaurin. So a Maclaurin polynomial is actually just a special type of Taylor polynomial. It's really simple. It just means it's a Taylor polynomial that's centered at x equals zero. So the example we did earlier, this one, this was actually a, uh, we started off working on a, a Maclaurin polynomial because it was centered at x equals zero. So if it's x equals zero, it's the same thing here. It's just all of these c's become zeros and it simplifies down to this. So technically, do you have to memorize this one? No, you could just use this one because it's the same thing. It's just centered at x equals zero. What you have to know is if they say Maclaurin in the problem, if they use that word, then you know it is centered about x equals zero. So that's what you gotta be able to focus on to learn from that. Okay, and again, two factorial is the same thing as two. All right, let's put this to practice. So the first example, we're gonna find the third degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x equals e to the two x. And again, because it says Maclaurin, that means I've gotta center it about x equals zero, and then it's third degree. Now what I'm gonna write here, and I do apologize, you may have to write a little bit small. I'm gonna write the third degree Taylor, oh, excuse me, Maclaurin polynomial, the third degree, uh, third order, I should say. Third, actually that's kinda of interchangeable, isn't it? Sometimes it might say third degree, yeah, I have seen that both. So third order, third degree, you'll, you might see it both. All right, so we're gonna do the third order and that means I'm gonna write this out. Now, I would encourage you for this practice, you may not have to do it in, in the future, but for this practice, it'll really ingrain it in your mind if you would go ahead and write out the whole thing before you figure out what all these values are. So to write out f of zero plus, now I'm gonna do the first derivative of zero times x plus the second derivative evaluated at zero 
times x to the second power, and then down here it'd be 2 factorial, but I don't have to write factorial, plus, and then I'm doing the third, 1, 2, 3, third derivative at 0, and then it's x to the third power all over 3 factorial. Now, I would write this out for every problem you do. Just kind of write it out really small because it will help, help you track everything that, that you're supposed to put into this problem, that you don't lose something. Okay, so now what do we got here? I'm going to write out, and this is where I make a quick little list. I know what f of x is. It's going to equal e to the 2x. And now I'm going to need f prime, f second prime, f third prime. So second derivative, third derivative, first derivative. So first derivative, 2e to the 2x. Second derivative, 4e to the 2x. And then the third derivative, 8e to the 2x. All right, I'm using chain rule here with the 2x. All right, so there's my first through third derivatives. And now the reason I made this list is so that then I can write out what these things are evaluated at zero. So this is what I'm trying to figure out, what all of these things are. That was the whole point of writing this out. Uh, so now I just kind of quickly here, plug in the zero to each of these x's and you get one, two, four, and eight because e to the zero is just one. So it's just the coefficients. Okay, so now that I have all that, I can go ahead and start plugging in the things that I know. So now I am going to have that my third order polynomial is going to be f of zero is one plus and then this first derivative is two so 2x plus third derivative is four so i'm gonna have a 4x squared over two plus third derivative is eight eight x cubed over three factorial so what i want to point out is this could be the answer if it was a free response problem. You'd be done. You could box this answer and you're finished. You will see in my solutions for the practice problems, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify it because if you're doing a, I'm gonna go another step here. If you're doing a, uh, a multiple choice problem, it's most likely gonna be simplified. They wouldn't leave their answer like this. But again, if it's a free response, you don't have to simplify these coefficients. You could just, this eight, three factorial, you could leave it like that if you wanted for a free response problem. So if I simplify this, then I'll just get, this plus, and remember three factorial, it means three times two times one. So that's a six, eight, six is four thirds X cubed. So there is my approximation polynomial called a Taylor polynomial. In this case, a Maclaurin polynomial because it's centered about X equals zero. Now, what does this do for us? We're now got a thing here where it says, let's evaluate these two things. So if we evaluate F of 0 0.2, and we just grab our calculator and plug that in you'd get that it is approximately, I shouldn't say equals, I should say approximate because it's irrational, e raised to the two times 0 0.2. So it's about this rounded. Uh, and then my approximation polynomial with a 0 0.2 would give me this, 1.4906 repeating. So you can see this is my approximation. This is the approximate value of the real value. So 1.4918, 1.4906. Those are pretty close. You got to go out to what, 10 hundred thousandths place before you're off by just one thousandth. That's a good approximation. All right, and then we could keep going. Instead of a third degree, we could do a fourth degree, go one more, and you get an even better approximation. A fifth degree would give you a better approximation. You just keep going and it'll start to match what the graph would look like. Okay, let's do another one of these, but this time just a regular Taylor polynomial, not a Maclaurin. So that's going to change things because we now are centered at x equals 1, right? So that's important there. So again, uh, write small. I know I didn't give you a ton of space, sorry. So write kind of small on this. So this is going to be p the fourth degree. So fourth order polynomial is going to equal. So I'm going to write out what it's supposed to look like. And you have this big, long, complicated thing. Notice a couple things as I was going. I don't remember. Don't forget that it's 2 three factorial, four factorial, and so forth. And then the exponents, it's two, three, four. And then, I, you know, instead of putting four, uh, four derivative little hash marks, you can just say F four of one. That just means it's the fourth derivative. That'll save you some, some time putting a little bunch of tally marks that you'll get them mixed up. Okay, so now we need to make a list of all of these things, F of X, F prime of X, and so forth. So I'm gonna have those appear here now. All right, I got, the function, first derivative, second, third, and fourth derivatives, all written out here. And then what do I need? I need to evaluate all of these at one because I'm trying to find each of these, right? I need that, I need that, I need that. I need each of those values in order to plug them in. So you just make a list real quick and write them all out with plugging in the one to the function and all of its derivatives. And we get this. 
So natural log of one is zero, and then you just plug in one into each of these, and these are the answers you come up with. Okay, so now let's uh, let's write out. And again, I don't like simplifying yet. I'm just going to write out exactly what I see here. So f of one is my zero, and then plus first derivative times x minus one plus second derivative and negative one uh, times x minus one squared all over two plus uh, third derivative is just two times x minus one cubed. And I could write out this one as uh, three factorial is three times two times one plus and then f of four to me fourth derivative fourth derivative is negative six times x minus one to the fourth power all over four factorial, which is uh, four times three times two times one. Okay, so then we go. Uh, let's simplify this now. Okay, four. So fourth order, Taylor polynomial approximation is, this is gone, we have x minus 1, you can leave in parentheses or take it out of parentheses, whichever you prefer, minus, and I'm just going to make this a 1 half, minus 1 half, times x minus 1 squared, plus, and then let's see, the 2's cancel, so I get 1 third, x minus 1 cubed, and then minus, because the negative 6, and then the 2 times 3 is a 6 there, so that's just a 1 fourth, x minus 1, do the fourth. There is my Taylor polynomial fourth order approximation. And then that leads us to, what do we do if we plug in a 1.1? So 1.1 plugged in gives us this long crazy decimal. And then if we plug in the 1.1 into our approximation, we get, that's a mistake, hold on. It says 0 0.2, that was the last problem. 1.1. So we plug in a 1.1, oh, it's supposed to be four, sorry. So P4 of, that's just messy. P4 of 1.1 equals that thing. So if we plug that in, this is the approximation. So notice how close these are. How many decimals? One, two, three, four. For five decimals out. We've got to go five decimals before it is different. So that's a pretty darn good approximation. That's really impressive. So fourth degree, again, that's going to be a better approximation. And you keep going if you want better and better approximations. So that's how these Taylor polynomials work. Okay, we've pretty much finished everything. We just got one more thing. This one, actually, I don't wouldn't even have to kind of go through it. It's going to be pretty obvious. But that is if it's just asking for a coefficient. So if it wants a coefficient of the Taylor polynomial, let's look back at this. If it wants the coefficient, really what you're focusing in on is the nth uh, degree right there, the nth not I want to say nth term, but the nth order, that is the coefficient. It's the derivative evaluated at the point C over that same n factorial. Okay, so if it was asking, you have to be careful. Does it ask for the coefficient? Then it's that. Does it ask for the entire term? Then it's everything. The whole thing is the term, and then that part is just the coefficient. The formula that we want then is this. This, where the n is the order. So it's f, and then this is derivative, what derivative we're taking, evaluated at c, and then it's n factorial. And then if we were talking about the entire term, remember, so if you were talking about the term, you'd also have to have an x minus c raised to the n. That's it, the whole term. But we're not, this is just for a coefficient, so we're going to leave that part off. I just want to show that to you. So for this last example, what is the coefficient of, the ter of this part of it? Okay, so we've got this third uh, third derivative, this, and we're looking for the fourth degree. So that's really simple. If I already have the third derivative, let's just take one more derivative. So fourth derivative of x is going to equal uh, three halves, eight x plus two raised to the subtract one is one half, multiply by the derivative of the inside times eight. All right, so then let's evaluate this at, what are we evaluating it at? At x equals two. So we're going to plug in the 2 there. That's going to be 3 halves times 8. Let's do that first. That's a 12. And then the raise to the 1 half just means square root. 8 times 2, 16 plus 2, 18. Okay, and then that's going to equal uh, 12 times 9 times radical 2. That's 12 times 3, 36 radical 2. Okay, so 36 radical 2 is the, the uh, fourth derivative. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the actual coefficient which is this. And again, if you don't remember it, just go all the way back to this and just think about the whole thing. And you're just looking for that. You could write out the whole term and then just focus in on the coefficient itself. So I'm going to have 36 radical 2 over, and then this is uh, over n factorial. What's the n? 4. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this whole thing is going to end up simplifying down. I'm skipping some steps on my simplifying. 3 radical 2 over 2. You've got a bunch of stuff to simplify. So that is the coefficient of this part of the, the uh, term in the fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, this is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.